started with the week 12 assignment number 12 for the VLSI design flow RTL to GDS conducted by NPTEL and it's being hosted by Sneh Sorapsar of Triple IT Delhi. Let's start. I'm going to present my solutions for the week 12 assignments. Let's go through the questions one by one. The first question here is uh, the clock signal arrives at the clock sync S1 as 45 picosecond and at S2 at 20 picosecond. And then they are asking about clock skew. So the clock skew is uh, simply put, clock skew is the time difference of arrival between the clock signals. So one signal is coming at 45 picosecond, another is coming at 20 picosecond. It means that difference uh, between the clock signal is 45 minus 20, that is 25 picosecond. So this will be the answer, 25 picosecond. Okay, let's move on to the second question. And we have to, uh, uh, we have to mark the, choose the correct option, the correct statements related to the clock tree synthesis. So as we know, clock tree synthesis main aim is to minimize the clock skew. Yeah, that is the correct. This is what that is what we want to do using clock tree synthesis. We want our clock signal to reach reach as many nets as possible without any delay, without any without any clock skew. We want all nets to receive a signal simultaneously, uh, especially when we are working with the synchronous circuit design. So this is what uh, A option is correct in this case. And its primary objective is to fix functional problem. No, it does not fix the functional problem. Clock tree synthesis functional problems are fixed using uh, using this uh, uh, fun functional testing page. Like we use this test benches and scan cells. So these are the things that are related to fixing the functional problems. We test we test the functionality of the circuit. It's not related to clock tree synthesis. So A option is correct so far. Let's move on to the third one, C option. Like it can sometimes introduce useful skew to improve the system performance or fix timing violation. Yeah, that is also correct. Sometimes what we do, <coughs> we can we can add some useful skew to the circuit so that the maximum operating frequency can increase and and it also makes that uh, all the all the now clock signals are reaching at different time so that simultaneous power surge that my circuit will want that is also reduced. So C option is also correct. So we are, uh, the correct option is A and C. So this is the correct option, only A and C. Moving on the third one, which of the following uh, clock architecture is correct? Is a valid systematic architecture, H3 architecture and X. Yeah, that is correct. If you remember, like this is the H3 architecture. It will reach to the major part of my circuit. And another is like an X3. This is an X3 kind of. Let me give you the reference from where this question is asked so that you can understand a bit better. It is related to the earlier topic which has been discussed in this current week, the last week. So, yeah, this was related to the useful skew being introduced. As you can see, when uh, an useful skew of 100 picosecond being introduced, so my maximum operation frequency uh, has increased and it reduces the simultaneous power drawn from the circuit. And what I was telling you, yeah, I was telling about the systematic tree architecture. So these, this is one H tree architecture. As you can see, this clock source is giving the power, giving, uh, giving the clock signal, <coughs> giving the clock signal in this format. This is the H tree, and this one is the X tree. So these are two format of for giving the clock signal to my various component of the circuit, right? So I hope this is clear. So both the uh, second and third question. Mm. Okay, so this H3 and X3 is correct one, B and C. So this is the correct option. Coming to the fourth one, uh, it is asking about the correct statement regarding to the mesh architecture in the global clock distribution network. So in case of global clock distribution network, what we try to achieve is that we want a minimum clock skew because it provides a robustness to our circuit. So what happens at the various clock signal reaches to our intended pin that is the target pin and they got average out and we what we get is a very good robustness and very good accuracy of the signal that is reaching there and the clock skew is also greatly minimized so this e option is definitely correct one and it is impacted by process induced variation no as i told that uh, this uh, 
mesh architecture in global clock distribution network gives you a very good robustness robustness increases means our circuit uh, will be able to handle the process process induced variation better process induced variation are like uh, uh, deformation or irregularity happen during the manufacturing phase like uh, like suppose the ion implantation is not done properly or some uh, some minor uh, minimal variation occurred so due to that this is, these are called some process induced variation as a designer we can't control these things so uh, what we do is that with this mess architecture we try to minimize we try to give our circuit more flexibility more uh, more robustness more robustness means it, it can be able to handle this process induced variation better so this b option is saying that it is impacted by process induced variation but it is not correct it is actually uh, it is actually not impacted by process induced variation that is the correct so uh, since this is saying that it is impacted by process induced variation so this is a not correct option and then it is saying that it dissipates zero power zero short circuit power no uh, if uh, in case of mesh architecture if short circuit of short circuit occur due to due to skew then what will happen uh, power loss will happen but it is saying that there is zero circuit short circuit power loss so this is also not correct so we are left with only option number a let me quickly uh, uh, let me quickly show you the slides from which this question has been taken taken care taken and so that uh, we can we can uh, we can get a good clarity about that so let's go into that part i think it is also related to the previous part of the week earlier part of the week itself where related to useful skew this is post optimization yeah this is the mesh architecture related to the global tree synthesis clock tree synthesis so as you can see this mesh architecture what i was explaining that there are now multiple paths to reach at the target pin so now what will happen the all the path signals will reach at the target pin and they will kind of average out and minimizes the minimizes the process induced errors if they are there are any right so this uh, there is a small skew variation uh, process induced variation can be greatly taken care of and they are reduced and thirdly is that it increases uh, the, due to short circuit power dissipation the power consumption might increase like right? this is one disadvantage so let me tell you quickly what does it mean suppose this buffer and this buffer they are like uh, taking the signals at some different time due, due to some skew has occurred so what will happen due to some minimum amount of time these uh, this is getting signal this is not getting signal so there is a, a kind of short circuit can occur between them and what will happen a uh, power uh, current can flow between them and it can cause to power loss right so this is one disadvantage which can occur in case of mess architecture so uh, now i think it is clear why you, there is o, a option is only correct so this was one important concept so that's why we discuss it with a little more detail so yeah it is now it exhibits a very small clock skew that is correct uh, it is impacted by process induced variation is not correct it dissipates zero short circuit power loss is not correct it dissipates significant power loss is correct and it is it is not impacted by power induced variation is correct right so we are left with only a option and a option is correct so i'm giving going with a option now let's <coughs> sorry let's move on to the fifth one the planning phase of the detailed routing that produces a high level routing of nets is called global routing yeah that is very much clear so in global routing we only do the planning phase we uh, this is the this uh, process uh, this phase actually gives a carves away for the actual routing that is going to take place in the detailed routing if we do the planning properly in the global routing phase then we, then we when we do the actual routing in the detailed routing phase we will not face any big problem so that is the case uh, in the planning phase of the detailed routing yeah this planning phase is related to global routing right so this is the correct option here and in the next part in the in the next question sixth one they are asking about sorry yeah next question it is about uh, capacity right uh, congestion so congestion formula if you remember congestion is related to uses uses of wire upon the capacity of the wire right like here the capacity is 10 like in a given line i can lay down only 10 wires but i am using 11 so actually it's yeah it's more than one 
so it's 1.1 actually yeah so this is this is the answer here so let me give you the reference it is uh, it is given here related to congestion hmm here related to congestion the congestion is the use upon the capacity so the capacity is the number of wires which we can lay down in a particular edge right this these are the edge what we did this is my die area now we divide it into global bins so there are nine global bins and each respective uh, adjacent global bins are interacting in the in the form of edges and the intersection of edges are are forming the vertices so the edge means it doesn't means here one wire edge can have collection of wires because in this global bin also we can have various standard cells right because this is the die area so what will happen is that uh, this is the edge and there is a certain limit that how many wires actually we can lay down during the interconnection or the routing phase right so this uh, is called the capacity and how much we are laying there is my uses so use upon capacity is called congestion so congestion should be any time be less than one only but in our case they we are using 11 wires and maximum capacity was 10 so congestion was 11 upon 10 that is 1.1 yeah that's the thing 1.1 use upon capacity next the seventh one which of the following task is carried out primarily to improve the manufacturability of the circuit so yeah uh, once you uh, give uh, let me give you a reference like in dual damascene process what we have studied uh, during the formation of this interconnect wires uh, one is going uh, go, going they they all are parallel to each other but actually perpendicular at the same time like this one is coming suppose out of the plane of the paper but this one next one wire below it will be going <coughs> in this plane of the paper in, in in this direction it is it is coming outside of the screen like that you try to imagine right so in this dual damascene process uh, we lay this wire and there is some interlayer dielectric between them and uh, in this way uh, in this way what happen is that there is a uh, there is some kind of irregularity forms when uh, be between this dielectric and this metal wire so we try to even out using some uh, uh, this ecd means uh, electric and chemical uh, chemical pro polishing process like this process that we do to even out the surface because think in this way think in this way like suppose we are forming a building so what will happen is that each floor each floor should have a should have a proper should be properly aligned with the earth surface right we don't want that this floor is tilted at some angle other floor is tilted at some angle we want all to form a parallel we should we want all the all of them to have a parallel alignment so that our structural integrity could be maintained so for that purpose we need to even out the surfaces of all the layers same goes with the chip designing also so in that case what happens is that at some part we have metal at some part i have dielectric interlayer dielectric so what will happen is that when we do this uh, polishing process on that surface uh, it might happen that the that the area in the area in the die which doesn't have this wires the metals part present in them they got more polished and due to that uh, my surface after that polishing process will not come out to be even so to make to to make that uh, surface even i try to put some extra metal pins in the region which is uh, uh, where there is no where there is no metal right so that the hardness of the surface is maintained and when i do this uh, uh, when i do this uh, polishing process uh, my uh, my circuit will be coming uh, uh, the, the layer will be coming very uh, very polished so that is one process of adding dummy metal pins that we add right so i greatly try to explain this uh, my best so uh, let me give you the reference also let me see if i am not missing anything now this is the thing just a second yes this is the manufacturability issue that the process i was calling was actually cmp process that is chemical and mechanical process what happened is that i told you know this is the metal one and this is the interlayer dielectric so when we do this polishing of the surface because of the region i told you that think of that analogy of the building and the floors that we make there we want all the floors to be parallel to each other right there should not be any tilting of the floor so that same goes with the chip chip contains of various layers they form the like of floors in the building so we don't want we want all to be very flat we want them to be very polished and they should be parallel to each other so this uh, polishing can cause uh, uh, the area which doesn't have any metal fields to get more polished so 
this is the what we add we add metal fills there to ensure more uniform metal density and during the cmp process we will be getting out proper polished surface metal polished surface and that will make our fabrication very correct okay that was my seventh question coming to the eighth question which of the following is uh, following statement about parasitic extraction is correct is or are correct okay so first statement we have here is it involves determining the parasitic resistance capacitance inductance yeah this one is absolutely correct and the capacitance extraction involves partitioning a layer into small window and matching windows with a pre-characterized patterns yeah this is also correct this is also correct and we typically use field solvers directly to extract parasite parasitics of all the nets in a given layout for a large digital circuit since field solvers are extremely fast no actually field solvers they do complex numerical calculations so they are actually slow it doesn't it is not extremely fast at all so c option is not correct we are left with a option and b option i will give you the <coughs> uh, i will give you the uh, this uh, the reference from which this question has been taken now so let's go into that reference slide it's related to the parasitic extraction so parasitic extraction i think it is uh, in the last last lecture it seems yes this one is the parasitic extraction as you can see resistance capacitance and inductance so be so all of these are uh, taken care in the parasitic extraction right and in pattern matching what was said that the that the partition we layer into we, we partition the layout into smaller windows and we match windows with the pre characterized patterns right and then we compute the capacitance with the help of the lookup tables and the empirical formulas the actual geometry of the layout that is going to be used we have some uh, previous database with us and we know this should be the capacitance that is coming out to be after this calculation and the thing about this field solvers mm -hmm. the uh, is that this value stored in the lookup table for empirical formula create using per fitting and this is highly time consuming actually this is the pre technology pre characterization when we use the field solvers for the computation what is what is happening that we use this empirical formulas and lookup table so that is actually time consuming so i hope you understood this explanation and you will you will get that why why only a and b are correct right so it will determine a determining of parasitic resistance capacitance inductance this is correct and this capacitance capacitance extraction involves partitioning layer into small windows and matching windows with the peri characterized pattern and i told you this field field solvers are not uh, are not extremely fast they are slow and they are extremely time consuming so this a and b option are correct next moving on to the ninth one for then ic design what do you mean by tape out yes tape out means the last stage when we give our design related database to the foundry for our chip manufacturing and this is the time for celebration for our team the design team who is who has designed this ic so yeah handling the final ic layout to the foundry for the fabrication is the correct one this one is an easy question this one is next moving on to 10th one so it is uh related to open road and okay this clock tree synthesis performed clock tree synthesis for the given design is correct write spf yeah, the, yeah, that is the specification file to dump out the information of parasitics of the given design that is also correct and check antigens to detect the run violation related to plasma induced gate damage so the plasma etching that we perform in dual damasking process that i told you earlier uh, related to the wire wire uh, uh, wire uh, wire lay, wire formation and the interlayer dielectric so yeah so what happens during plasma induced plate damage it can introduce some charges in the wire and that can be that can further cause the antenna effect also so yeah these all three are correct okay these all three are correct clock tree synthesis perform the uh, this clock tree synthesis for the given design spf is related to parasitic that is correct and check antenna to detect their uh, rule violation related to plasma induced gate damage that is also correct so a b and c both are correct so this is the correct so that's all about the, all the all the question of this week 12 if you have any doubt, please, please let me know. I will try my best to answer you all. Thank you.